Hi everyone, my name is Andrei Stoyan. I'm Principal Solution Architect at OCI AD Networking, and we will discuss today about how to configure a Cisco uh, CPE device for an IPsec connection. And after that, we will discuss how to enable the BGP over the newly established IPsec connection. I will let you read the safe harbor statement and we will jump straight ahead to the networking diagram. We will use the internet as an underlying uh, transport network. And in the left side of the screen, we have the Cisco CPE device. Now, because we want to activate the BGP over IPsec, we need to handle the tunnel interfaces together with the IP addresses and over the tunnel interface, we will run the BGP session. We need to take care about the public IP address that we will use to reach the CPE device and the DRG side. As a side note, the DRG side is already configured at OCI, so we will not touch this part. We will only focus the configuration that needs to be done on the Cisco IOS CPE device to have a successfully peering with the DRG. Now, for the BGP, we, ha we are going to use an AS number of 65550, and we will peer with the well-known AS31898 on the Oracle side. Uh, what we want to accomplish is the traffic from the on-premise host to reach the OCI virtual machine and vice versa. As you can see, we are using non-overlapping IP address space 10.210 and 10.200 slash 24. For some other information or the or for the prerequisites, you can consult our public documentation. This is the OCI CPE configuration template, including the Cisco IOS, and this is the OCI VPN Connect service. As you know, OCI is providing you a lot of uh, networking services. Now we will focus on the VPN Connect. Uh, in the VPN Connect section, you will see all the prerequisites, all the information for phase one IPsec, phase two IPsec, and all the algorithms and encryption and authentication algorithms that we are supporting on our side. In order for this demo to be completed, we have used some, let's say, dummy um, uh, IP addresses simulating the endpoints. Um, and these are listed here for the CPE public IP address and the DRG outside public IP addresses. Now, for each and every IPsec tunnel, we are going to use a separate pre-shared key. The tunnel numbers, the fast Ethernet 00, which will be the um, interface connecting in the outside direction on the CPE, the VCN CIDR block, the, uh, the on-premise CIDR block, the tunnel interfaces IP addresses, and the BGP autonomous system numbers. The configuration steps will include two big sections. The very first section is the IPsec configuration together with the phase one and phase two, and after that, analyze the BGP configuration. I have created in advance the CPE configuration, and using the comments that we are seeing on this slide, we are going and check actually what is configured, and more than that, what you need to have configured in order to successfully peer with the DRG. Remember, the DRG is a route-based device. This means that the encryption domain is formed by a quad zero as a local and remote um, uh, some nets, and we are configuring Cisco IOS in route based, so we will use tunnel interfaces, and for this you will not need any uh, uh, IPSLA on the Cisco side in order to generate interesting traffic and let the Cisco to trigger the IPsec tunnel creation. In route based mode, Cisco will generate immediately the IPsec tunnel once the IPsec profile is applied on the tunnel interface. The very first point, define the ISA KMP policy profiles and peers, and this is the phase one IPsec. I will drag into the main screen my Cisco IIS CLI, and let's go and run some show commands in order to see what we have configured and what is the output, right? So show, run. I want to limit a little bit the output. I don't want to have the output, so I will use S means section and policy. This will give me only the desired uh, output, section and policy. Okay, we have here the policy. Uh, for any encryption, hashing, uh, and hashing and Diffie-Hellman groups, you can consult our public documentation and you will see the updated uh, um, algorithms that we are supporting. Second, show run section crypto keyring 
these are the pre-share key enabled for each and every peer on the OCI side. We have Oracle VPN1 as a name and Oracle VPN2 as a name. And as you can see, a specific pre-share key is matching a specific peer on our side, on the Oracle side. Now let's see the ISA KMP profile or the phase one profile. Actually, the profile will combine the uh, two configurations that we already show. Show run section ISA KMP profile. We have two profiles for first peer and for the second peer combining what we have defined above. With this show, we have finished the phase one. Everything is set up for phase one. Now let's see what we have for the phase two. We will check the transfer set, show run section IPsec transform, transform set. These are the parameters that we are using in this moment for phase two. Like I said, you can, based on your software version, you can use more advanced, for example, hashing algorithms, consulting our public documentation to see what parameter, what algorithms are supported on the Oracle side. We have phase two or apart from phase two, and let's go and check the uh, tunnel interfaces the IPsec tunnel interfaces. Show tunnel one. Okay, so we have the tunnel one configuration together with the IP address. As you can see, I have already applied the IPsec profile Oracle VPN one here. And if we check the tunnel two, we will have the tunnel with the other peer on our side and peering with the profile Oracle VPN two. Now, I just want to enforce the idea. You need to use your own tunnel naming convention or the correct IP addresses for peerings. What we have in this demo are only for testing purposes and for showing you that we can have a successful configuration with the OCI DRG IP second point. So from the IPsec, everything is in place or from phase one and phase two. Let's check uh, the phase one status and the phase two status. Show crypto ISA key and PSA. We have here the state QM idle, which means quick mode idle. This is a good news. It means that the phase one is established successfully. Let's see the phase two. Show crypto IPsec SA. Now we have for the tunnel two, we have packets encapsulated and decapsulated, and the same thing for tunnel one. Packets encapsulated and packets decapsulated. This means that the traffic is going uh, in and out over the two IPsec tunnels. Everything looks good from this perspective. We have everything in place for the uh, uh, IPsec. Now let's go with the next step. I will start with show run section BGP. I have defined my remote peering, peering with 31898, 10.002, and 10.006. Everything looks good from this perspective. I'm announcing into the BGP my local network here. And as you can see, we will explain this later. We have some traffic engineering in order to prefer the tunnel one and have tunnel two as a backup. In case of tunnel one failure, the BGP will update the BGP table and the routing table with the routes received over the tunnel two. Let's see the BGP neighbor status. Show IP BGP pipe include BGP neighbor pipe established. I'm checking for the established state, okay? We have BGP in the established state to actually BGP in the established state two entries for the uh, for the two BGP peers. And let's go and see show IP BGP. Now this is the BGP routing table. 
And as you can see in this moment, we have two neighbors, 10006 and 10002, with a local preference from 10006 and with a local preference of 1000 for the 10002. And as you can see, this is best and preferred. So in this moment, we are preferring the route through 10002 to reach the 10200/24 network. Perfect. So we have BGP in the established state. We have the BGP peer established. We have the route received from the OCI side. Now let's see the traffic engineering that we have created. Show route map VPN one local pref for the first neighbor. In OCI, we have defined the local preference of 1000. For the VPN 2, we have defined the local preference of 500. And in order for instructing OCI to send the traffic back to on-prem using the tunnel one, we have defined a route map prepending the autonomous system number. And show route map as prepend VPN2. Over the second peer, we are prepending two times our local autonomous system number. And as you can see, I will go back again to the uh, show run section BGP. As you can see, the previous route maps that we have introduced that we have created, we have introduced in the BGP configuration for the 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.0.6. Perfect. Now we should have uh, traffic in the good condition. In this moment, let's ping other part, 10.200.0.10. So I will use ping 10.200.0.10 with a source of fast Ethernet 01, which is an interface inside my internal network source fast Ethernet 01. Okay, so we have 100% uh, traffic um, ready. Uh, now let's test a little bit the failover. So what we will do, we will uh, tear down the tunnel one and we will send the ICMP again. I will go into the configuration mode, conf T interface tunnel one, and I will make, I will put the shutdown command. I will wait for the tunnel interface to enter the down state. Okay. Let's see, show IP BGP. As you can see in this moment, I have only a valid route through 10.0.0.6. Let's ping once again. As you can see, my traffic is working without any issues. So I will ping once again for the R process to be okay all right so 100 percent ready and in this moment we have completed the switchover process and we have a valid backup path thank you very much for watching